Hey everybody, Cigna here with the Bullish Bears. I'm going to do a really, really quick video on futures and points and ticks and handles. So what is a tick? Everything in the marketplace has a tick. If you're looking at something like SPY, Apple, AMD, Bank of America, they move in one penny ticks. So if I zoom in really, really close, you can see that the market goes one penny at a time. Well, every one of those pennies is one tick. Futures products don't move penny by penny by penny. They move with a different tick. And we have to know what that tick is per product that we want to trade. The index futures, the NASDAQ and the S&P, they have a 25 cent tick. So if I zoom in here really, really close, you can see that we never move penny by penny by penny. We go 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents, never hitting any penny amount along the way. All right, just these quarters, 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 quarters. So you'll never trade in the futures and have it move from 33.23 to 33.23 and 5 cents. The next move up or the next move down will be an entire quarter, and that's a tick. Four ticks are in a $1 move, so from 33.22 to 33.23, that is $1, but we don't call it a dollar, we call it a point. That is a one point move, and there are four ticks, 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar. Every one of these ticks have a value. If it moves 25 cents, that is $12.50. And when it happens again, it's another $12.50. And when it happens again, that's another $12.50. So once it has happened four times, we've made $50. A one-point move in the S&P E-mini is $50 because there are four ticks in a dollar, and each tick is worth $12.50. Now, the micros have a completely different tick value. The tick size is the same. It's still 25 cents per tick, but how much money you make is reduced by tenths. So instead of making $12.50, you're going to make $1.25 instead. Instead of making $50 for this whole $1 move, you would make $5. Now, you might be asking yourself, why in the world would I want to do that? Why would I want to choose the smaller product? Well, depending on your account size, the smaller product might be the only thing you can afford. Or perhaps you took a trade in the bigger product and you're getting a little bit of heat. You're, you thought it was going to go short, so you get in to go short and it's starting to go long. And to hedge just a little bit for a short term, you might jump into one of these micro products and go the other direction with these. That way your account is making money while you're wrong in your other trade and you're just not taking so much heat. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to trade one of these versus the other one of these, but it all really comes down to risk management. If you could make $50 in a one-point move, then you could lose $50 if you took a one-point move in the other direction. That might be more than you're willing to risk. So you could look to step down into a smaller product while you test a new strategy or you prove that you can follow the rules or you only have a small account and that's all you can afford. Whatever the reason, you now have more choices and now you know what a tick is and how many ticks are in a point. If a point is $1 
and the tick size is 25 cents, then we know there's four. But what if we get into something else, something like oil? How many ticks are in one point of oil? If we're looking at this, and we'll just draw a box from 51 to 50, how many ticks are there? Well, to find out, we first would need to know what is the tick size. Okay, Thinkorswim makes that really easy. We can just go up here, click on Futures, and look at oil. The tick size is one penny, which means it's exactly like Facebook or Spy or Apple or any of those other products. It's just a one penny tick size. That means there's 100 ticks in this thing. Each one penny move will make or lose $10. Think about that. Every penny that oil moves, you make or lose $10. That's a lot of money. This one point move here in oil between 50 and 51 that was a $1,000 move in oil right there. Bonds are completely different because they use fractal dissemination. So if we go over and we look at bonds, we still need to know what the tick size is. So if we draw a box from 61 to 62, that would be one point and then we would need to go in and we would need to find out what the tick size is in this product. How much would we make or lose in a one point move if we were going to trade bonds per contract? So we go up and we hit the drop down, we go to bonds. This has one over 32. So for every fraction that it moves, it will make or lose $31.25. There are 32 ticks in this one point move. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's because I have researched this, but we could just zoom in. We can now look. We got 1 over 32. 2, 3, 4, 5. Just keeps going. Now we're past 10, 11, 12. It keeps going. Now we're in the 20s, 21, 22, 23, and it's still going. We get to 30, 31, oh, there's no 32 because we've now gotten to the end of the point. So if you remember fractions in school, you've got 1 over 32, 2 over 32, which you would want to, re to reduce and say 1 over 16, 3 over 32, 4 over 32. Each one of those fractions makes or loses $31.25. So now you understand one point is a whole dollar amount and the ticks are how many ticks there are inside of that one point move. And you can find the answer by looking right there, the tick size. What about the Russell? We'll go to that one because that's a little different too. It'll just offer a little more diversity to look at. So we'll zoom in tight here. We're going to go from 56 to 57. That'll be a one-point move. How much money do we make with one contract of the Russell if we trade a one-point move? First, we need to know what its tick value is. So we go in, we look at the Russell. It uses a dime. Well, there are 10 dimes in $1, and every dime will make or lose $5. Okay, so this one will make $50 in a one-point move exactly like spa, uh, the ES will. But instead of it using quarters like the ES, it uses dimes. So for each dime that the Russell moves, you make or lose $5. And in one point between 56 and 57, there are 10 ticks. And just like that. So now you have uh, understanding of points and ticks in futures.